Time to put on this new exterior door. I have two of them, the one for the front. I've already done that one. That was my first door uh, in block. And I ran the camera, just one, but when I looked at it, uh, I didn't stop to tell you what it's doing and camera was never in the right spot. So I just abandoned that video. I'm Ron Paul, and this is the Smart Wood Shop. If you want to get a detailed set of plans to build a smart wood shop for yourself, one of the Polk Smart Benches, or any of the accessories that work with the system, there's a link in the description of this video down below. These are the same with the front door. I got full light fiberglass door. Jam is PVC, good for this environment. The glass is that impact glass. So meets all the codes for Florida for hurricanes and stuff like that. Really drives the cost of the doors up. But, you know, the insurance company likes that. Ordering these, again, I, I can't expand the block. I'm stuck with the block. So when I measured this out, um, I ended up with uh, about an inch and a quarter more opening than jam. I wanted an inch and a half. Actually, I'd rather have two inches. But getting them that custom, it just, it, it doesn't work. Gets really expensive if you can do it at all. Because these are standard, standard doors. Uh, so what I'll do is I put a buck in. So I'm going to use a three quarter inch buck on one side and I'll cut the other one down or I'll cut them both down and have a little more room. I want, um, I'll, I'll caulk the sill before I set the door in and the top will have no buck because there's only about a quarter of an inch there. So I'll foam that, which is what I did on the front. On the sides, I, I'll have the bucks in the good attachment with the tap cons, but I want a little air space around because I want to foam or caulk around. I like to seal up with that and not just try to have the wood tight. Plus, making the wood tight doesn't work anyway because that moves. So um, we'll see how that uh, works out. So the first thing to do is remove the old door. I get the door almost there before I do any real fastening. And the interior doors, I use the air hanging out here because it's a one piece door and I have the, I, I can't uh, like cut the bottom of a jam and set it flat. I have to um, raise uh, one side or the other of the um, threshold if the, if the, you know, surface is at a level, which it is. But the same thing's going on. I'm, I've got my marks for my strikers and they're just about lined up now in fact they're just perfect and I have the door plumb off the hinges and it's not attached at all there's no screws no nails uh, nothing holding it in place there's a couple shims in the bottom a couple shims at the top me just pushing it around so because this is an outswing uh, it, it's a little complicated for me uh, because I got to go inside and do a little fasting before I can swing the door. So I'll have to go in and I think I'll um, drop in a couple of finish nails in the uh, trim on the very edge. It's not going to be anything to hold the door. I'm going to use tap cons and go through and in to the block for the real hold. But I'll do that after everything is all dialed in. So again, just like just like. Uh, all of my doors, interior, exterior, double, single. I get them 95%, 98% working, functioning before I start fastening things. And then I'm fitting, fitting shims and nails and screws. I'm not pulling the door. It's in place. And, you know, there could be a slight amount of pull if I need to, you know, do just a little tweaking. But it's not really reefing things. And depending on that stuff to pull it back, I want to fit it. And know the door wants to be there and it's aligned and adjusted and all of that 
and then I'll start tacking in places and, and sort of, you know, putting the stamp on it, setting it in stone. What I haven't done is check uh, plumb this way, and I'm basically going to flush with the inside, and I can't really see that out here. I don't want to depend on measuring from, from this side. This will be, when we get it all done, we're going to have this all stuccoed, and this is going to be stuccoed around and up, up to that. So that should be pretty, pretty cool looking. So I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up, but uh, it's, it's just there. I mean, it's, it's just wanting to be plumb. So I am slightly, I need to go just about, not much. It's got to go back that way. And you can see where it's kind of pulling from the weight. If I just put pressure on that, just straighten up the jam, then it's plumb and the door swinging freely. And over here, my lines, my pencil marks that line up the, the two locks are just perfect. So you can see if you, if you just make sure you fit it, it's going to want to hang properly. And not only that, because you're not forcing it, it's not going to try to move. If you, when you twist and push and try to really make things uh, go that they aren't going, uh, it's going to want to pull out of that position uh, over time. Now, what's different about this block that's, I wouldn't have trouble with this at all if it were wood, because I could just put in, finish the L. I may be able to do that into this and see if it'll hold. Um, but I could, with wood, if I just would, I could do finish nail, but these are going to, this could be held in place with tap cons. And there are um, strips here that are uh, weather stripping, and I'm going to pop those out. I want to leave them in for a little bit just because they help me in fitting because once I pull them out, there's a big gap on the inside and I just want to make sure that, you know, I'm fitting good. So I think now I'm going to see if I can get a finish nail to hold that back just a little bit. Yeah, so now my hinges are just absolutely plumb. And it's better to check out here because this really emphasizes any that it's off. And that's absolutely plumb as well. What I'm not sure about is this way. I'm just more going flush into the inside as long as it works. Yeah, no, that's plumb too. I wasn't going to worry too much about that as long as if the door were tipped a little bit out or a little bit in. As long as it's flush around the inside and it's working, I wouldn't worry about that. So again, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lock up the side that the hinges are on because that's where the weight is. So I'm going to put some shims in and a couple more finish nails and then I'm going to do my tap cons to get this side just kind of locked in.
like the refrigerator door. It's got a nice seal on it. The lock closes nice and easy. And I foamed it all the way around. Tomorrow, this will all be expanded out. It'll be filled out, and I'll just cut off the excess. So we've got a good sealed door with uh, impact glass. Plus, we have a lot more light than we did with the old wood doors with just the nine light. So I like it. So I have one more thing to do. I have one of these level locks. This is to work with our smartphones. With the uh, works with the um, iHome, the Apple version of Smart Home, and this one's invisible. So when I put it in, it goes inside of this. So there's nothing on the outside to indicate that it's a smart lock. So we'll see how that works. I'll do a separate video when I set this up and and uh, show you how that works. Thanks for hanging out with me here at the Smart Wood Shop and the Florida Fixer. You stay safe and have a great day.